Hey, we're the Foothills, and this is Vibe Check. What's up, guys? I'm Adam. And I'm Nate. We are here at Noisy Cricket Audio for a special event for you guys. Yeah, we're here for Vibe Check with none other than the Foothills. We got Paul, Vincent, and Tony ready to kick it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. to say I still get down on my knees at the end of every day Right, that first song is called The Fox. Just wrote that in the past year and uh, going to be playing a few songs here that um, kind of are just reflections, uh, especially on the last year and a variety of things that have happened. So uh, this next one is called 21st Century Blues. And 
All right. How awesome was that? Guys, we are here with the Foothills, and we just wanted to ask a few questions so you could kind of get to know them and where they come from. So, guys, thank you for being here, first of all. Thank you so much for having us. us. Uh, This is one of the coolest things I've ever done, and I'm really excited about it. So if you wouldn't mind just giving me a little history about who the Foothills are, where y'all came from, and how y'all met. Well, so uh, this whole thing started about three years ago, and um, I, at the time, I'd stepped away from music, and uh, Vincent here, he and I have been friends for a long time, and he kept getting on to me about coming and uh, just hanging out in his garage and playing music, and uh, he finally broke me down, and we started doing that, and uh, did that for quite a while, right? Like six yeah. months or something like that. And uh, played open mics and stuff like that. Yeah, so it was one of those, well, we might as well, we might as well kind of things. I was like, well, we might as well go play some open mics. And so we started doing that. And they were introducing us as Paul and Vincent, which was ridiculous and lame. And we, we needed to, we needed something that we should have that name, actually. Yeah. Welcome to the stage. <laughs> Paul and Vincent. Paul and Vincent. Yeah. And so anyway, then we started thinking about, well, we might as well come up with some kind of name that sounds cooler than Paul and Vincent. And uh, then it was like, well, we, we, need, we really need at least one more person just to kind of fill out the sound. And the way, I, Vincent, you, you maybe take it from there. How'd, the, how'd it go next? I just got online, and I, I forget what thing you'd put your profile on that was musicians looking for work or something, and that's where I found it. I just Googled bass player in Chattanooga, and he's the first person we had come over. So Yeah, he was like, so there's this guy. And I was like, all right. So... Um, they uh, I, actually, Vincent. I'm pretty sure you contacted Tony. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Tony yeah. showed up at the garage, home base, and uh, it just everything clicked. It's just like one of those. I stories. think we played what a, like two and a half hour show, like three weeks later or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we had scheduled our really our first legit gig, yeah. and we brought Tony on, and then two weeks later it was that. We really didn't expect anybody to be there. It was at Puckett's in downtown Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the place essentially was sold out. I mean, yeah. it was just standing room only. There's a ton of people there. Still kind of a mysterious event to me, but Tony Tony just had to jump right in there. With Killed about, it. It's like, what, 25 <laughs> songs or so in two weeks, almost all of them original. So it's been a while. It's just been a wild ride uh, ever since. I don't know. I can talk about this forever. So. That's awesome, Stop. man. Yeah. I, I really do enjoy that. And something um, you don't get to see as much every day, especially in this area, you don't get a lot of these awesome Americana folk bands. Is that how you would describe yourself? I, that's pretty yeah. good. Okay, Americana. So when did you start playing that type of music, or was it something you've always really done? Mm, well, for me personally, I've I've kind of made my rounds through all the – all the genres and stuff, and it's it's a real it, it's a really strange reality for me because I didn't grow up 
really listening to country and stuff like that. But I did listen to a lot of just the great songwriters, going back to Bob Dylan and just fill in all the, the names. So um, I guess I came by it honestly that way. Um, I was kind of playing in a country band a few years ago back in Chattanooga uh, called Paul Hadfield and the McCoys. And uh, so then I think really it's more just the influence of Vincent and his... his yeah, I had seen them play live you know, several times and I just thought, well, that music could be translated to... Awesome. To something acoustic also, so... Yeah. Selfishly, like, since I play acoustic instruments. Yeah. <laughs> it works out really well. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving the, uh, the, I mean, y'all's gear, by the way, is incredible. You know, you know a musician, like, when they have really nice gear, you're like, man, these guys are about to kill it. Uh, uh, we'll get back with some more questions here later. Uh, would you mind playing us a few more songs? We're really excited to keep this going. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. So, next up is Fever Dream. Fever Dream. All right, 
So I've uh, been trying to touch a base on a, on a variety of issues. I really don't like to uh, say a whole lot about that. Just kind of let you um, let you sort that out for yourself and decide what it is that you think about it. But this next one is called Bird Tattoo. That was incredible. Thanks for thanks for gracing us with that. That was awesome. Um, I appreciate it. Man, appreciate you, it. you have such fullness of sound. Um, I love that. I think you guys bl blend bluegrass with folk seamlessly, and uh, you oh, got thanks. a modern take on it, which I really like. So, uh, with that in mind, um, can you kind of explain that last song? Um, the lyrics <laughs> seem pretty substantive, so um, yeah. it seems to have a personal connection. I assume with you. Um, can well, you give uh, some, some insight into what those. Lyrics mean? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. I, um, I wouldn't really say th this one isn't really autobiographical. I, and um, I, I've been trying. I, I've spent a whole bunch of my songwriting career navel gazing and and stuff. And and uh, really, with most of these songs, what I've been trying to do is just obviously all the songs are influenced by things that I've seen or or whatever. But but not so autobiographical. Uh, with this one. Um, I think the best thing to say is just maybe through uh, just 
I watch the news real closely and I, you know, follow current events real closely and just um, all the stories in the last uh, couple of years about uh, surrounding the Me Too movement and things like that and just uh, these abusive relationships and and stuff. And so um, the, the song kind of springs out of out of all of that, you know, just trying to inhabit the mind of of somebody that's. Um, wanted to get away, you know. I think that's probably the best thing to say. Yeah. I'll leave you with this. How does your workflow in terms of the songwriting process work? Who comes up with the first thing? Is it a hybrid of, like, different processes? Or, like, what? Uh, how do you guys go about writing a song? Paul usually, he writes all the songs. Uh, and so he's written every one that's an original that we play. And he, he sends us a a rough take on his iPhone, you know, from his house when something comes to him and he's finally got a concept wrapped up and uh, shoots it to us on our phones and uh, just lets Tony and I do whatever we want to with it. Uh, yeah, one of, the things, much it. one of the things I really appreciate about Paul as a songwriter is in a setup like this, it's real easy for it to become the Paul Hadfield show. And I feel like he's very intentional about it not being that. And I... I love that you write the songs, but in a lot of ways he does after that kind of turn it over to us to, like I said, have our way with it. So I feel like you trust us a lot to kind of take your concepts, take your ideas and help kind of flush them out and fill them out. I can't think of any time you've ever been like, no, that's not the part that yeah. I was feeling for this. Uh, so <clears throat> you, he's really the wordsmith and he allows us to work as a team really to craft out these songs which has been refreshing compared to you know some other groups i've played with in the past <laughs> well yeah and that just really comes out of experience you know that comes out of just playing in several bands i mean i haven't always been that guy so don't so don't let them uh you know fool you i, I mean just like throughout the course of my um my playing years and uh, but i've learned that in the end if you're willing to, you know, you take your idea and you put it together and then if you'll let it go and let people that you trust uh, put their stamp on it, it always turns out better, you know. I mean, it's just, that's pretty much the way everything works, I think. So, um, I, it's it's just awesome to play with two guys like this that are so in command of their own sort of musical ideas and their musicianship, their ability to play and everything. So yeah, it's easy to it's easy to trust them and just say, take it, do something, let's see. You know, sounds cool. I like that. And the only reason I'm gonna ask this question is because I just saw your hat. I see you're a fish fan. So <laughs> I had to this ask, is a running joke. <laughs> I have to ask. You I do want to hear that running joke, but I do have to ask <laughs> What are some of your guilty pleasures? Because clearly, like I'm talking about, are we Katy Perry over here? Do we like some Doja Cat? What, what you feeling? <laughs> I got to oh, hear some funny. things, yeah. Oh, it doesn't have to start with me. I mean, I, I don't make it about me, so when do you guys start with that question? <laughs> he has to think about what it. What was the question? <laughs> guilty pleasure. Musically guilty pleasures? Yeah, musically guilty pleasures. Uh, yeah. Musically. So, so I uh, this, this is kind of a cop-out, but uh, I was... Random term events. I, I published some papers on like Juggalos ICP. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use that to spin in that. I'm not a fan of that genre, uh, but I am you know, a research papers. nerd. <laughs> I have. Me and, uh, you may not hear that in an interview <laughs> again. We need to have a separate interview just for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just interviewed with, by the LA Times for it. Uh, it's pretty interesting. But uh, where's where's all this coming? Yeah. From? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, um, but one of the things that I said in the interview is I don't really believe in the concept of guilty pleasures oh, because okay. because the thing is is we we internalize what we hear and it speaks to speaks to us at a given time. So I feel like after we get out of middle school, the idea of you shouldn't be listening to that kind of peer pressure starts going away. Mm -hmm. uh, but within that vein, I would say, yeah, I'm a fish head, hardcore. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the band, the Avid Brothers. My son's name is Avid, but as far as what people would probably consider guilty pleasures, I am like head over heels in love with 90s country. That's awesome. Like, give me some Joe Diffie, some John Michael <laughs> Montgomery. Like that is my jam right there. Travis, my, my dream was always to either be the bass player for Travis Tritt or uh, Joe Diffie, RIP.
I mean, yeah. you should never feel guilty about listening to 90s country. No, because that's good stuff. That stuff's the bomb. That's good stuff, for sure. I mean, Blake Shelton lived through the 90s, so he's technically 90s country, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That How works. About, How about you, Vincent? How about what I, you got? I don't know that I really have a guilty pleasure. I just like something from every genre, pretty much. I mean, I, I, like I had it. a whole period of my life that I was really into uh, metal and punk, you know, so I, I've got influence from that, uh, you know, I play bluegrass with my son. My son is a fiddle player and mandolin player also, and uh, he's 12 years old, and I kind of raised him playing, and we, we play bluegrass, you know, that's what he's taught, and uh, and so I play with him some with that, and, uh, you know, of course, I grew up in the 90s, so let's, I know every lyric to all of the 90s country songs. I love that, yeah. Uh, but just everything. I mean, if it's good, I like it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm also... That's the running joke is that Tony and I are longtime fish fans. We've been ah. to tons of fish shows, deadheads, and Paul's not. <laughs> I love so, that. It's a lot of rehearsal, and we're just like, yeah, you know, the 72592, you enjoy myself. Oh, the one with Santana, and Paul's like, shoot me in the face. You know? <laughs> I just go outside, I go for a walk. I just let him get it out of their system. That's systems, awesome. You know? yeah, yeah, I'm assuming y'all been to one of those like uh, three day fest they. Oh yeah, that's it. You can't li- be I a spend the millennium. Dude, how long do you this video to go? If you get these guys <laughs> going on excited. this, we're all in That's big awesome. I, I just that's great. That's see, that's just inside of the band. That's awesome. Everybody knows you a little better now. All right, that's awesome. Well, I'm gonna let you guys get back to what you do best. Okay. So, what's the name of this next one? So this next song is called Paradise for a Little While. There is a bit of a story behind this one um, because uh, John Prine, a big hero of mine, is a songwriter. I know, basically true for everybody. And uh, I'll keep this short, but this song came um, about the night that he passed away, which was roughly a year ago. Um, we're coming up on that. So early on in, in the midst of all the stuff that was going on, um, saw the news about that. And I just sat there at my desk uh, all night. It really hit me hard. And, um, you know, he had put out an album recently, which was real good. And he was kind of having a bit of a renaissance and, and new, a whole new generation of people discovering him and stuff. And, uh, and on a personal level, just I'm originally from Western Kentucky, and he has that great song, Paradise, that most people recognize. And um, so that had just kind of, there was this theme of that that has run through everything, and I'll skip a lot of that. But anyway, so it all, it all hit me pretty hard, and I started putting all that stuff together. And so the night that he passed away, I wrote this song, which is called Paradise for a Little While. Dad's old Monte Carlo, the eating of the fake leather seats. I was riding shotgun long before I shot one. The windows down the knees and down the street. John Pine was singing about the coal mine of Muhlenberg County, talking about the air that smelled like snakes. The words crawled up in my soul.
old slip and die Ghosts on the far shoreline seem to be whispering Come on over here to the other side It is paradise for a little while That's paradise for a little while. Cool, gonna let Vincent make a little instrument swap here real quick, and then we'll play our last song for you uh, this evening. And uh, this last one's called Dopamine. So, uh, thanks so much uh, to everybody uh, involved in this whole thing. It's so cool to be down here in Trenton, Georgia doing this thing. And uh, to anybody that winds up seeing this, we hope you enjoyed it. Come check us out. Uh, as soon as we can, we plan on being on some stages. And in the meantime, we're going to be doing whatever we can to get this music out there. You guys got anything you want to say? Just thanks again. Thanks for me. Yeah. Uh, really uh, appreciate the opportunity. Look for us online at the Foothills Official on social media, foothillsband.com. Uh, we have two albums on pretty much every streaming platform out there. So uh, our first one is called Shadow of the Mountain. Second one's called Rest Easy. So listen, like, follow, share, and yeah. Cool. Yeah. This one's called Dopamine. Around every 
it is. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. That is awesome. Would everybody watching this please give a hand? <laughs> awesome. That is. This has been absolutely incredible. Um, for this being um, one of our awesomely first video shot, you guys nailed this. Uh, please go look these guys up online. Give us those details for your uh, your social media right quick. Sure. It's uh, at the Foothills Official on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, foothillsband.com. Uh, has all of our contact info and uh, yeah our two albums that are out are Shadow of the Mountain and Rest Easy which are on all streaming platforms that is awesome so go check out those albums be on the lookout for anything they've got coming up because you do not want to miss a show from these guys this is going to be one of the most incredible things you will ever see <laughs> so uh, thank you Paul yes. thank you Vincent thank you Tony you guys have been the bomb uh, I am again Adam from Noisy Cricket and we love having you guys here thank you thanks so thanks much for having us. appreciate it <laughs>